Welcome to Friday evening and it is an absolute scorcher of an evening. We are just literally doing the rounds giving everything the second lot of water of the day. Um, everything that we gave this morning has already heated up. We don't have running water in terms of troughs and things in the fields and the containers that they're in have been in the sun all day and they are like literally putting your hand in. It's like putting your hand into a bath which although it won't harm the animals it can't be very nice to drink on days like this especially when they're looking to try and cool off so just making sure that everyone's got enough food and water for the moment and Stephen has already started in the distance his Friday evening job which is actually part of his weekend job as well we'll get into that just now but yeah we've been about 24 degrees here and it's set to get hotter all weekend so it's going to be a hot one well I'm just trying to get a head start on my job like Tracy said hopefully by the end of this weekend I'll have the shed moved from down the bottom that we were on about the other week and put onto here. So I've already got two of the big pallets that I had down. They're screwed together, leveled up. So now I'm just trying to tidy all this bits of uh, pebbles and rubbish that's been lying around. And I'm just going to fill in the base just for somewhere to get rid of them really. So I'm going to try and get all that done and I get all this cleared around. Tomorrow I've got a base, uh, them composite boards that I picked up. I'm going to composite board all the bottom of that and then hopefully catch the chickens, get them locked away somewhere secure so I can start taking the shed down and get it onto there. That's the job, well, one of the jobs for the weekend. I've also got a load of logs that I need cutting and moving, but we'll see how far we get. So hopefully I'll get all this tidied up tonight. Give me a head start in the morning. While Stephen's doing that, I'm just going down to the chickens of the area where he's going to be moving tomorrow and making sure that they've got everything that they need. So in the morning, I just need to let them out and I don't need to give them any extra food or water, etc., etc. It's just one extra thing. Give us a bit more time in the morning. So this is the creaky old looking spooky shed that Stephen's moving. And I've actually come also to get this tub because I want this in the greenhouse. It's somehow ended up down here. It's for one of my um, plant pots so I can water from the bottom, but I'm not sure how it's ended up as a chicken feeder. So I'm gonna return it to where it should be and then need two hands for that the other thing is that shed needs a good clean out so at least by moving it we'll be able to give it exactly that and i've also got the other animal job to get done this weekend too so one of the things that we do try to do here is get as much done on a weekend as we can not on a weekend on an evening as we can to save us the next morning so whatever we do to get on with we can just get straight on with that and not have to do the half hour hour of jobs to get everything topped up with food and water. Another problem area that Stephen's having to take a break from what he's doing to help out with is the little little area, the little is the little base of the IBC tank there that we've um, cut off to create a duck pond. Every day that needs cleaning out. Well, to be honest, probably twice a day would be fine for the ducks because they are so dirty, as you know. And it's got to the point now where it is completely flooded so many times obviously from tipping it out that much that the, the ground's just disappearing so we're going to give that area a little break and when Stephen's just moving it over here ready to clean out and refill it's more than enough isn't it could be a bricklayer Stephen can't help themselves can they ducks and water <laughs> anyway that's filling up nicely now so i'll switch that off just in a moment or two but the area where stephen is working on that's what's going to be opened up so that the ducks no longer have this kind of land with no grass on it obviously this did have grass and then they've they've killed it all off but they'll be very happy out there in the paddock once all of this is opened up so stephen i believe is going to be removing all of this fence at some point possibly or at least making the entrance for them bigger so that they can go on the paddock as well but yeah they're going to be in there before it's full it's going to be filthy before it's full every single time they're absolutely loving all of the bugs that it's exposed moving those slabs Second one's in, filthy already. 
I'm absolutely loving it though. She's just like... <laughs> She's just messing on with the horse pie. There we go, another one saying, oh, it's a bite. Right, I best get something done or I will be there all night. I've brought my um my plan to bottom so i'm going to get finished there with what i was doing then i'm going to do friday night in the greenhouse which is a separate chat um where it, i just talk about um kitchen garden related stuff rather than all sort of small holding stuff just for the people who are here for the gardening rather than the small holding um and then we are going to have a bonfire because yesterday was the summer solstice and it's the perfect time to be having a nice bright bonfire in the bottom of the garden while it's in the woods just near where the pigs are but far enough away that it shouldn't affect them too much. However, we do have a lot of things to burn and it's all wood, it's all, there's no chemically stuff or anything like that in there. Um, but when I'm saying it's a lot, I'm on about the size of the bonfire. And so, you know, men and fire. <laughs> anyway, I can see it's rather a high fire from here. So I'm gonna get everything watered in here that I need to get done, do Friday night in the greenhouse. And then I'm gonna take the hose pipe down there. Not that I expect it to be at all helpful if there is a problem. Um, because of the size of the fire compared to the hose pipe it's always good to have a backup plan isn't it and then the idea is it'll die down really quickly it's it's just a lot of fine stuff it's not it's not things that's going to keep up it's not going to be too big for too long hopefully and then we're just going to sit around the fire and just essentially just enjoy the evening as late as possible which will probably be about five past nine for me and then we'll uh and we'll just sit and have a drink i've got some burgers that we're going to cook down there and just you know just chill out and enjoy the evening before the busy weekend ahead What could go wrong, Steve? Nothing really. Could be alright. Good morning, happy Saturday. It's Saturday morning, first thing. It's still really cool. The weather is due to heat up quite a lot today, so there's a few things that we want to get done outside before the heat of the day. But last night we had a beautiful fire. It was really large when it first got lit, as expected. Died down really quickly. The good thing about that though, as well as enjoying sitting around a fire, having a drink and some family time, we didn't actually cook on the fire, by the way. It was just far too hot in the end. <laughs> Couldn't get near it. Um, but the good thing about that is when that eventually does die down and the embers cool off, which usually takes a couple of days to such a large fire, we'll be able to use the wood ash that it leaves in the garden. So we'll be able to gather that up in a suitable container and keep that to be able to use that for the plants that that'll help. Now, Saturday morning, as I say, I've just been in and done the chicks. I've given them fresh water, given them fresh chick rum, checked on them. They're always a little bit skittish when you do that. So they're hiding in the corner at the moment, but they'll have settled down just by the time I've left. They are doing really well. They're growing fantastically. We've had some fantastic inquiries about them and people are also interested in buying the eggs. We're not too sure how we're gonna do that though because we haven't got the facilities to be able to post the eggs and they're kind of cost prohibitive to buy those. But all in all, a really good, a really good turnout. The chicks are thriving. We haven't lost any more. So we're definitely gonna be getting some more of those eggs in the incubator as well as some more duck eggs throughout the summer essentially. Now, I've already got some jobs done out here this morning, but I still need to get the pigs and the horses fed. And before I can feed the lambs, I need to clean out their creep food, creep food feeder, because unfortunately quite a bit of rain has got in there, even though it's covered up and it's just turned it all to mush. So I don't just want to keep putting good food on top of bad. So let's get that started. 
I've literally just walked in the barn to start getting the food and I've left this stable door open for this mama chick and her, uh, sorry, mama hen and her chicks this morning. The reason being, we wanted to keep them in the stable for a little bit longer, just until, a, until they're large enough to take care of themselves a little bit better. But this morning, when I was doing the other stables just next to the, um, the other chickens that are just opposite where we're looking at the moment, the mama hen jumped on top of the stable door, which was closed, and I turned around and saw, and the white chick that we've got fell out of her wing. So she, when she jumped up, the chick had obviously been chilling out underneath her wing, and she'd taken the chick with her. Um, much to the chick was completely surprised and didn't have a clue where it was when it landed on the floor. It was totally fine, absolutely not. There it is, you can see in the, the middle of the three. Um, so I thought, okay, it's time to open the door and let these guys venture free. The problem she's gonna have now, of course, is keeping them where she wants them. They'll, um, they'll be all over the place and then you'll be able to hear her clucking saying, <laughs> come back. But we know what that's like with kids, don't we? Well, that's all I'm fed. The pigs just in the distance there. They've been doing absolutely fantastically in the pen that Stephen extended. No problems whatsoever. In the ponies um, feed there, we put extra water is it, in his food just to slow him down eating so that he doesn't go and steal. Lydia's our older horses because um, if he finishes first, then he tends to go over and take hers off her. <laughs> All's fair in horse world. Let's go and check on this fire because I think Stephen's got some other things that he wants to burn on it today. They are empty. Are you literally licking that out? Hey, we're going to do yours next. Yes. Hang on, let me do this first. So if we go through the woods, as we call them, see what's left over from last night. There's the trusty hose pipe, just in case. Now there'll be a little bit of mesh in here as well as the wood because, oh, there it is, you can see. That was actually... Um, attached to one of the pieces of wood and we couldn't get it off. I can still feel the heat off that. Maybe jacket potatoes for lunch. Anyway, Stephen's got some other wood that he didn't get on it last night. I mean, there's this kind of tree branches and just tidying up this area a little bit. I think he's probably going to get that on and we'll just keep it going throughout the day. Nothing like last night and it's purely from a work, a work perspective now rather than sitting around and having a drink. So I think that's what he'll end up doing today whilst he's doing the other project that he's got on of um, moving the shed which is going to be a big one in itself because that is really heavy. This creep feeder has been working really well and it did actually have um, a cover on the top of it but unfortunately that's why it's getting wet it's blown off which we didn't realise so you can see it's all turned to mush so I'm going to get that cleaned out and refilled now. Turns out we need a new bag of, turns out we need a new bag of feed. Who needs a gym? There's still nothing left in there. I've filled up the creep feeder and cleaned it out, filled it up and put it back. And obviously these big girls here can't get in, but hopefully these little ones can. You'll see there's still a massive size difference with the little one that wasn't very well and the one that's been thriving the whole time. However, the little one does seem to be doing okay now. Um, she's up and about, she's engaging, she's alert. So fingers crossed, you're gonna be a healthy lamb. Say hello, everybody. Right, come on. Creep feeder's got food in it. Come on. Here. It's in there. You know the scar. Come on, little lamb. Go on. There we go. A little lamb can fit in still. I don't know if you can fit in still. Oh, nettle. So graceful. So you can see how it works. The entrance there, small enough for the little ones who need the creep feed to get in, but not for these big girls. Not for you. I'm not gonna get too, I'm not gonna get too close and put her off, but that's a really good sign that the little lambs wanting the food as well. I wonder if she can't fit in anymore. Are you too big now? And this hole here where Carol, this ewe's got a head, is how we feed. So we put the feed through that hole and drop it down to save having to take the trough out every time. And that's how we get the trough out. Because this hole at the side where the lambs go in is actually too small to get the trough through. 
but the trough fits fine through where Carol is demonstrating with her head. Oh, sorry, was I in your way? Oh, she <laughs> just as they get in. Good job. Okay, happy that they're that they're eating. Oh, the only problem is actually, can you see we've got old feed tubs at the back there that we can't reach? <laughs> I'll have to send somebody much smaller than Stephen and I in to get those tubs out. Anyway, let's rescue these empty buckets and get on with the day, Nettle. That's all the animals taken care of. I haven't collected the eggs yet. Um, I can do that a little bit later. The sun is already really warm through the clouds, even though it's still a little bit overcast. Stephen's heading out in just a moment to start on his tasks. So I'm going to get the things done that I need to get done, such as working in the greenhouse. There's only a few jobs that I've got in there that I need to get done. But I'm going to work on those jobs before it gets too hot for me to be in there. Right, well, I've come out this morning to continue on with this, the shed base. I've just been down and checked the old shed. I think I'm going to make this the actual base of the shed. I'm going to scrap that base because it's a bit trashed and rotten and everything. So this, with the cladding that I'm going to put on the top, is going to be the actual base of the shed itself. So I'm going to try and make it as rat proof as possible. You can only make it as rat proof as you can. So I did put some cladding on the sides, but then it didn't really fit right to the floor. So I've been and got some of this mesh that we had left over. And I'm just cutting strips off it and running it down along the sides and across the floor. I was going to dig it under the floor, but it's going to be an absolute nightmare. So if I just, by the time I get this cladding on the sides and push that. So even if the rats do dig under from here, we'll be able to see where the actual coming from. But by the time I get that screwed on, it should be pretty tight. It should give us a bit more protection anyway. Right, so that's it for now. I've finished the outside entertainment area, dance floor, music venue, whatever it's gonna be. But this is actually gonna be the floor of the old shed. So we're keeping the, the two side walls of the shed and the back and the roof. The front of the shed I'm gonna modify so that it actually sits on this so whenever we scrape this out it'll just scrape straight out and we won't have no lips around the front but currently it's got a big window in it and a door but i am going to change the window for a door <clears throat> so it's going to be two doors in the shed instead of a, a window and a door the base is actually bigger than the shed but once i get it on and set in place i can cut around because it overhangs the the pallets and the boards so just what we've made it out of is all the stuff few months ago that I got from a, a unit over on the industrial estate that my neighbour knew. So all this was free. The base is two, eight, uh, two four foot by 12 foot pallets screwed together, leveled out and then topped off with this stuff. Now it's quite heavy, but it's quite thin. It's like, I don't know what it's made of. It's like a composite board. So it's really thick and dense. So hopefully no rats will be chewing through that. So yeah, like I said, all this was free. Make use of what we got. But I'm not going to put the shed on today because we need to let the chickens perch for the night and then we're going to catch them all up, put them in the barn and then I can start taking the shed down tomorrow. So that's it for this project for today. We'll finish it off tomorrow, hopefully. Meanwhile, while Stephen is working over there, I am doing the annual big rhubarb harvest. Typically, the wind comes, which is very welcome, to be honest, because it's, a, it's certainly a warm and sweaty day to be working outside. Let's have a look what I'm working with. I've already got sort of a wheelbarrow full-ish. Let's head over to the outdoor kitchen, get this tidied up, and I'm gonna get these uh, leaves. I can use those as a mulch for something. I'm not too sure what just yet, but it's a little bit too warm to be doing any of that at the moment outside. So we're gonna go over there and get the rhubarb cleaned up. But the first thing that we're going to be doing with it is turning it into a rhubarb wine. So country wine, here we come.
Well, that's it. It's officially summer. So today's the day we turn the agar off. We normally turn it off during the summer. We have left it on one summer all the way through the year and it was absolutely boiling in here. Plus we didn't really have any other method of cooking. So now we've got the outdoor kitchen, all our attention will be moved to outside and that'll be where we're doing mainly all of our cooking and eating. We do have a backup cooker in here just in case the British weather like it does disappoints us. We can still eat inside. But for now, this has turned off for the next few months. So in the next couple of months, I'll be stripping it all down, giving it a good clean out, doing all the filters. There's a filter in the outside oil tank, which also needs replacing. But she's off for the next few months. Well, it's always sad when the Argy gets switched off. As Stephen says, there's only been one year that we didn't actually switch her off. And that was the first year that we lived here. Um, I was absolutely adamant to keep her on. But unfortunately, now the price of oil has gone up so much compared to that first year. It's literally more than double the price of eight years ago. Um, so, we, you know, we obviously have to take that into account now. Little did we know back then we were onto a good thing. We should have stocked up every container that we had, but we didn't. So one of the benefits of switching the agar off obviously means that the oil usage um, will slow down. You can literally see day by day the, the oil going down when the agar is on. Um, the only other thing that uses the oil is our hot water. So we've got a hot water tank, it heats up once a day and then, you know, when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> so sometimes it's fighting for the, don't be the last person to get the shower unless you want a chilly one. Um, so yeah, so hopefully the, we'll be able to over the summer um, and the next few months, even into autumn really, we generally look to have a back on again by Halloween, just feels right. But if we have a long hot engine summer, you know, we're not going to be stupid and do that unnecessarily. Um, so as I say, hopefully over the summer, we'll be able to top the oil up and keep getting a few deliveries here and there because, you know, it is super expensive, as I say, doubled in price. So doing it in smaller amounts, you don't feel the pain quite so much, do you? Anyway, it's Sunday morning. I don't think Stephen mentioned that. Yesterday, I got the a load of rhubarb harvested, as I showed you, and I got the rhubarb wine started. So I've been sensible this time. I've done the River Cottage um, recipe. That's not the sensible bit. The sensible bit is I've stuck to just one recipe amount. I haven't kind of doubled or tripled it, which is what I've done in the past and where I think I've I fell off a little bit. I want to do it exactly as it's supposed to be done this year. So there's literally rhubarb and sugar in a sanitized bucket, a fermentation bucket, um, just one of those ones you get from the likes of Wilco or whatever and you put i've put in one and a half kilos of um sliced up really thinly rhubarb and 1.3 kilos of granulated sugar mixed it up and that's going to stay in there for three days now so we're on day one i've set myself a reminder because i know what will happen i'll go to day five and i'll go oh heck and, and that's what's matter so all there's a reminder on i won't forget this time and despite it looking a little bit more gloomy um than it maybe did yesterday the temperature is already 30 degrees. It's still early morning, 30 degrees in the greenhouse, sorry. It's really, really warm. So there is a breeze, but it's a warm breeze for a change. It's not like one of those freezing cold ones that we've been having for weeks and weeks. So we are getting back on um, with all of the projects and bits and pieces that we've got on this weekend. Stephen is busy working. I think he's trying to take the original shed down. We didn't move the chickens last night and um, got distracted with, with something else. Um, that sounded really dodgy, it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> Um, so Stephen's working on that today. I'm going to go and get the garlic harvested now. Right, so this is the shed we're going to be attempting to move today. It's 12 foot by 8 foot, but it's solid. It was here when we bought the property, but it was up the top there near the greenhouse. And we moved it down here about five years ago. Now last year, when we had severe rain, it was a foot underwater. So we've decided to move it for that reason. So I've already been down. I've stripped all the perches out and the nest boxes and all the storage that we've just been shotting in over the years so now i want to get on i don't know how i've put it together it was originally put together with bolts but i just noticed it's got no bolts in so i must have just screwed it together so hopefully it won't be too difficult to take apart i just got to find the screws and take them out i can remember one thing about the roof it was far too heavy to move in one bit so i have cut that in half and then reattached it so that's one thing i remember anyway everything else it's just a mystery <laughs> So this first two rows is Garth Hewer. Some people might be leaving theirs in a little bit longer, but there's no, these are starting to dry out. There's no moisture left in some of these stems whatsoever. And at least I can get the beds 
ready for the next cross, which will be winter brassicas. Right, stay in your lane. Well, as you can see, it's down. Well, it's apart anyway. So just to put things in perspective, this is half of the roof. The other half is over here. So like I said before, when I took it down up the top, this was in one piece and I just had to push it off over the back. So we couldn't manage that, so that's why I cut it in half. So now the challenge is to get it up the top there, but this is the front of it. And it, as you can see, it's got no, it's all rotted off at the base there. So I'm gonna change this whole front I'm going to leave this door but make another door for that because that door is way too heavy and bulky for this and then I'm going to leave this panel and maybe put another door here and then just put one window in the middle because I'm going to eventually try and make it two sheds so that can have two different types of chickens in either side the chicks in that side and the chicks in that side that's the plan but it's down so now we just need to get it back up quick word on the base we're leaving this base here because have you seen I've made another base up there but just the reason why we're not taking it I mean it's all rotten and all the edges I've patched it up over the years and patched all where the rodents have been in and chewed holes in and everything and like I say this has been underwater for a couple of weeks last year so it's probably underneath it's probably all shot anyway but we've got a new base this one will just get chopped up and burnt I'll salvage any wood I can off it but I doubt there'll be much to to get off it but yeah this is staying here makes job makes the job a bit easier. Get these two up, might as well while we're in. Effort, effort by all. I've had to drag the whole team in, Tracy away from a harvesting the garlic and Jack off his jobs or whatever he's doing. But it's up anyway, structurally up. It still needs straightening off and a load of screws screwing into the base, and then we'll we can get on with tying up. But we're going to take a break, get some dinner. It's getting hot out here now, but after dinner we'll come back, tidy all the roof up, get them screwed in, get it all leveled, then screw it into the base, and then it's just titivating it up. Needless to say, I think I'm going to be aching tomorrow now, not just Stephen, as is normal after a weekend of projects for Stephen. Um, I have got three rows of the garlic harvested before I got shouted over there. Two rows, one variety is called Gar, Gar Kiwa, is that how you pronounce it? And that's actually looking really good. I was, I was pleased with it, but um, I'll get one out here as an example. Nice big bulbs. They are soft necks and the other ones that I knew would do quite well with the early purple so I will grow both of those this year I'll get them planted in the autumn for next year's harvest assuming that I like the taste of the, uh, the or that we like the taste of the garcia as well so it's the absolute hottest part of the day I'm going to work as quickly as possible to get the next three rows harvested and then I'll report back and we'll do, go and spend some time in the outdoor kitchen I think we should make some rhubarb ice cream what do you think <laughs> Thank you. 
Right, we've got a bit of a wing and a prayer making um, rhubarb ice cream from last year's. This is stewed rhubarb. I was going to use pureed rhubarb, but I didn't have any pureed. And I'm not going to puree this just for the recipe. I think it'll work out just fine. I'm using a jar. These are approximately 300 mils, I would say, maybe 350. And in here, I've got two cups of heavy cream, which is, what's that, 500 mils, I think? Thereabouts anyway. And I'm just slowly bringing that to a simmer. And I've also made up a custard. This is going to be a um, egg-based sort of custard ice cream. I've never made this one before. So in here, I've got two large egg yolks and a large egg, or basically the largest that I've got. Um, two thirds of a cup of sugar, just under, because I'm making slightly less than the recipe recommends. Um, some vanilla, and it calls for one cup of milk, but I haven't got milk, so I'm just using extra cream, but I have made slightly less than the recipe says. I've basically used what I've got left. So let's give it a go. The idea is that you heat the cream, it starts to simmer, and then we're going to pour the cream into the egg yolk and into the custard and keep stirring it. I'm probably going to need a bigger container, actually. Right, I'm probably safe for pouring this into this pan because it's a bigger surface area to whisk. It does end up going back in the pan where the cream is now. What's the worst that can happen? So if you're worried about the eggs cooking, it does say in the recipe that you will save this at the end before you kind of churn it, um, before you put the rhubarb in. Sounds a bit gross, but hey ho. Right, what am I going to do? I'm going to use a proper whisk, I think. Let's put that. Right, I would say that that is... Oops. Right. So the idea is that you supposedly just drip a little bit of this at a time. All right, it's back into the original pan and you're gonna heat it ever so slightly until it starts to thicken, but doesn't cook. Apparently you do not let it boil. So then when it's done that, we're gonna leave it to cool completely. So I'll probably put it in the fridge and then we're gonna add the cold rhubarb, um, pureed it says, but it's not, so we'll see how it goes. Add them both together and put them in the ice cream maker, which was a marketplace find. Now, as I say, I've never actually made this version before, but if it works out well, I'll keep this recipe because um, it's nice and easy to do. And we make a lot of the purees that we'll be able to add to it. And you can just change the flavour each time. If you want to, you can add in, um, at the churning stage, you can add in, you know, raisins or um, chocolate chips, etc, etc. Not sure I'll do that this time. We'll just have the rhubarb on its own I think. This is the stage now if you want to you can I've just taken that off the heat um you can strain that I'm not going to because it doesn't look like there's any lumps in it whatsoever and it's just an extra thing to wash up isn't it? Freaking doorway that's one. Right. Right. So far. I was going to make a new door to go on here because that one just actually weighs a ton but I might just take some of the the wood on it that's the wood off it that's on it but up to now I've got a new window in framed that this is where I'm going to cut out to put a new door in so it's going to have a door there we're going to separate well these are the first thoughts we're going to separate the shed into a big part so that there's going to be a wall inside there that's going to be a big part for our Rhode Island Reds the layers and our meat production birds and this side up to now is going to be for all the chicks and we I think we're going to get some chicken netting and net it out here and down there so this will be for all the chicks and the meat birds growing up but for eggs and egg layers and our stock is going to be in that side so they'll get the rest of the paddock but we need to get I don't know where we, far we're going to get on tonight because time's ticking so I need to get this door on for now I need to block that up somehow with maybe just some mesh just to make it fox proof for the night but i think that's where we're going to have to stop because i haven't got time to cut that out and make a new door tonight so i might have to do that next weekend or tomorrow we'll see what that what time brings but for now i need to get this door on and get it secure well we left each other at the ice cream stage where i was just taking the custard base off the heat and leaving it to cool that has very much cooled because it has been in our fridge or refrigerator overnight so today i'm going to combine the rhubarb puree or stewed rhubarb as you guys saw and that custard because it's definitely chilled enough 
and I'm going to pop it in the ice cream maker and finally get this ice cream done because yesterday yet again got away with us you won't be surprised to hear so we're going to get on with that now because if I start something else you can guarantee it'll be tomorrow and we'll be talking about the same thing all over again so this is the ice cream maker that we've got Andrew James um as I say this was a marketplace find really cheap you tend to find these are the kind of things that people buy on a whim and then don't use them and we have used ours a few times but I have to admit it has been sat on the shelf for a while but it's summer again so it's time to crack it back out so i'm going to mix the ingredients together before i put them in here to churn there's a paddle that goes on this bit and it literally goes on top and just churns it for about 20 minutes or 30 minutes all right so we've got a rhubarb out of the fridge this is really really cold absolutely fine and delicious this is basically a sweetened rhubarb i'm gonna put half in there i haven't measured this out to be exactly what the amount that the recipe calls for so it is a bit of a a guessing game and this has really thickened up look it's got a bit of a skin on it but i'm sure that that'll well it'll have to be okay mix that in my goodness how could this not be delicious get that in there another use for this uh, stewed rhubarb is literally to put it in a, a sponge um, just a regular sort of light sponge cake mix it in or just pop it on the bottom of a um, cake tin and just cook it as you would oh my goodness it's so good well if I pour do you think it'll go straight in there or am I living on the edge oh no I think I think we're good. Perfect amount. While that's churning away, I'm just checking on the rhubarb wine. In the bottom of here, we have got um, one and a half kilos of rhubarb and 1.3 kilos of granulated sugar. I've just checked to make sure with it being so warm that we've not got any mold or anything forming. Touch wood, fingers crossed, nothing yet. So that's looking really good. I have to be honest, today is another, we're on 26 degrees here, which you can tell is another warm one for me. The ice cream has been churning for maybe 10 minutes now. It does say it can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, but every ice cream churner is different. This one, as I say, is just a cheap one, but it's done it in the past. So it's just a case of cool, when it's, when it's, it's just a case of it just obviously cooling it right down. The um, inside, I should have said, the inside tub that you actually pour the custard make into um, has been in the freezer for eight hours. So once it churns against the walls of that, that's how it cools it down. And effectively, when it's done, I'll shove it in a little container. I need to go and get one actually. And then we'll put it in the freezer just to, to, because it'll be a really, really, really soft set when it comes out of the ice cream maker. Put it in, put it in the freezer and it'll make it a little bit of a, a, a more typical ice cream. But if you like it like that, crack on. Delicate lady. <laughs> 